We're at the end of our South Central tour shooting for Home Diagnosis Season 3. My co-host is very excited to show you some of the stuff on the trade show floor at the National Home Performance Conference, which is in Nashville this year. So let's go in and see some of the latest and greatest in tools and equipment. In the videos I've already released this year at other conferences, we've shown you Brone's new kitchen exhaust hood that's got an infrared sensor that's going to make that automatic. Their new automated ERV installation uh, process that's using AI and their dehumidification options now. Every home is different. There is no silver bullet for any home. So if you're going to start addressing ventilation, you need to be able to think in terms of fans, containers, which are ducts, barriers like walls and doors, uh, dampers, fans, dehumidifiers, humidifiers, etc. So this is going to be more and more of the conversation. We're going to have more videos coming soon about this. At the RetroTech booth with Ben and Sam, they have all kinds of great tools for testing home performance. Uh, the most obvious ones are blower door and duct tightness, and you have a new ability on these fans, right? That's correct, yeah. Now we have the ability to charge the gauge right off the fan top itself. So if you forget to charge a gauge overnight, you're not left dead in the water when you show up to the job site. And we have a new gauge, and this is kind of a game changer, right? Yeah. So can you tell us about it? Yeah, so this is the DM32X. So it has a lot of the same familiar features that the DM32 has, like the color-coded ports, uh, ergonomic design. However, um, this will have a uh, capacitive touch with Gorilla Glass, kind of like an iPhone does. Uh, and it'll also have some onboard training materials. So the user manuals, the quick guides, and then some training videos as well. So if you're new to blower door or duct testing, the gauge can kind of teach you what to do. So the gauge is also a data logger. Uh, there's a graph button that you can uh, press here, and then we can see uh, on the graph here any changes in pressure that happen on channel A here. No, normally people are running a single point blower to test where you just run it to 50 pascals. If you want to run a more complicated test, you used to have to have a laptop, and then you'd have to have a stand for it. And of course, somebody like me is going to come along and knock that over, and now I'm out 3,000 bucks. But now you've got the ability to actually run our cloud, which is your app on this, right? Yeah, the app is built on board on the gauge, so you don't need anything additional. And you don't even have to be on Wi-Fi to run that. You can just download it when you get back to Wi-Fi land, right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Thank you guys for doing great work. We're going to be going to their factory uh, later in this year, so stay tuned for that. We're at Rockwool with Chris, and I wanted to just point out this, which is always kind of sexy, showing that it's fireproof. It's also hydrophobic, which means it doesn't absorb water. You can put it under slabs. They've got board versions of it. And one thing that's interesting is that the difference between sound insulation and thermal insulation is not much. All it is is that the sound insulation is actually half inch thinner because air is a good insulator when you have to go from one material to another it makes the sound work harder. So that's kind of an interesting byproduct. The other thing is that we're going to be visiting this factory where they're turning basalt and slag into this rock wool insulation. It is literally rocks. And you know that when you start carrying it around and schlepping it up into attics and <laughs> up hills. It's worth it. You can see this stuff installed in the tiny lab, in our dry vault, the tool shed, and also in our big house at the Air Cycler booth with Jason Wolfson, who has been developing uh, controls, and the controls are taking a next level step to help us get more customized on our home performance, right? Right, we're introducing the third generation in our long line of uh, innovative low-cost ventilation controls. We're now connecting to the web. So for example, if you gave me your zip code, um, I can go out and find out what the temperature is outside your house, or the relative humidity, or from one of the EPA websites, what the air quality out of your home is. And if you'd like to adjust the ventilation rates or inhibit ventilation if there's bad air like a wildfire or uh, too hot or too humid, um, you download our app, connect to our uh, new controller, and now you can vary the ventilation based on outside conditions. Um, and what's even more important is now we can do ventilation based on your inside conditions using one of the many available indoor air quality sensors are now on the market. And then we can say, what would you like to do with it? Bring on your central fan, open a damper, and if you're connected to bath fans, we can turn them all on. Um, if you have a CO2 event, well, that may be local, it might be a bedroom, and you've got pockets of clean air in your house, other rooms, living room dens that aren't occupied, all you need to do is bring on the air handler and mix the air in the home up, and now you've got, you've solved your air quality problem without bringing in, in outside unconditioned air. This is one of the things, this playing with ventilation components like Legos, and just you need to figure out what you want to do, what impact you want to have, and then just figure out what fans and filters and controls, and the controls are really, really important, and they haven't really existed until this last couple of years, to be able to mess with homes, because each home is as unique as a fingerprint. Yeah, and once you connect onto the web, the information available is absolutely insane. So for example, if some government study said, well, we can vary the ventilation 10% when the moon is in retrograde after the summer solstice, 
all right, if you want it, we'll write the software. But it gives you an idea of how uh, much information, how much control is now at your fingertips for no cost. And the software is super cool, but the hardware is kind of insane. Will you, do you have that chip on you? Jason pulls the chip out of his pocket that's actually more powerful than the first computer that I had out of college. This is a, uh, a module that is a 32-bit microprocessor with 4 mega memory. It's got a built-in 802.11n, uh, 150 megabits per second Wi-Fi, a 4.2 uh, blue version Bluetooth, um, half a mega RAM. Um, it, it, the capabilities are absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, we're left uh, with a, an amazing amount of computing horsepower to do fit things the scientists may come up with and ask us to do. Not a problem. So we've laid a foundation in hardware that should carry us through a lot of innovations that these other guys come up with. And right now, Jason might only be asking this microprocessor to like turn on and off a fan, which is not very hard. So the, the kind of ceiling on the capabilities of this are endless. This is a temperature, humidity, and actually airflow probe. Uh, it's basically a hot wire anometer. You can't measure the temperature humidity right off the bat because the temperature in the duct may be closer to the uh, basement temperature. Or whatever. So we let it run for a couple minutes to bring in outside air to get uh, a temperature reading. And then we start doing flow, which is great because now you can find out how many CFM is going into your air handler to get the proper ventilation. Now the really beauty of this is if that CFM starts to uh, drop, that flow drops, we can start to determine that your filter's clogged. So you can set in our app, say a certain flow rate below that, um, your filter's clogged. And if you'd like, we'll send you a text, send you an email. And as we talk about disasters on season three of Home Diagnosis, we're obviously also talking about solutions, which is resilience. And this ability to change, to adapt how homes are acting is incredibly important to that resilience because of course we've got different climate zones, we've got different types of housing, we've got different kinds of occupants and different behaviors. So thank you for keeping on innovating and coming up with new ways to help us tune homes. My pleasure, thank you for teaching people how to tune homes. This is the guy I turn to when I have questions about how tools actually work. Bill Spohn, SureTech Tools. Where do you see tools going lately? Electronics is getting better just in general for consumers, and that's spilling down into our industry. So connected tools with more powerful Bluetooth range, uh, Wi-Fi, better screens, easier to navigate menus. I mean, a lot of the, the vendors are going with menus that mimic what you'd see in your smartphone, which makes a lot of sense because the world is training us how to use smartphones. So in that sense, uh, you'll be able to more readily pick up a tool and use it. Uh, faster processors, longer range connectivity, and just connectivity, period. Just having what used to be a product with a plugged in probe to it, a plugged in sensor. And you'd have to stand there and watch it. And they have to stay connected. Now you can have just a probe, which I call radio probes, because they transmit the sensor data back through a radio to the app, uh, to, to an app, and the app can then work with that information, combine different data points uh, from different sensors, from like even the world, uh, to give you a richer set of information to do better diagnostic work. Do you think that there will ever be a brain that will replace a person who is analyzing all the different data points that are coming from these radio sensors? I, I think artificial intelligence in that sense, yeah. Machine learning, uh, that's already happening. I like products like MeasureQuick, I think really it, uh, it's distilled Jim Bergman's brain to a large extent. MeasureQuick showed him something that he forgot momentarily, uh, but he didn't he thought there was a glitch in the software, but it was something he had embedded in it. So things like MeasureQuick, you know, basically digital checklists, help us remember the plethora of things that we have to know by putting it in front of us in the right context at the right time. At TEC with Jake, obviously, blower doors. This was the first blower door that I owned. Jake, what's going on with blower door technology lately? Software-wise, we've added an update to our gauge, which helps you set the tubing in the right configuration. So if you're going to be setting up the gauge differently than you typically do, we now have an app that will ask you a few questions about the test, and then it'll actually set the gauge up and give you a visual representation of how to do the tubing. Nice. So More training built into the tools, I think, is important. Awesome. Great. Thank you very much, Jake. Okay. And then Chris, we got HVAC-wise. So you're an HVAC professional and now you're with them. Can you talk about this TrueFlow setup? There's been a lot of interest in measuring total system airflow on an air conditioner. So in my perspective, coming from my background, is you got to get the air conditioner, you know, airflow set right. That's a huge component in controlling humidity in a home. So we're showing this off and there's been a lot of interest from home performance guys. So this is Bluetooth? 
uh, both components are Bluetooth, right? The the gauge is Bluetooth. There's a DG8 one channel manometer, affordable by homeowners, by the way. Now it's only about 500 bucks, and then we've got the TrueFlow plate that fits into different size filter slots. Is that right? That's right. And a lot of interest from the home performance crowd here. They already have blower door manometers like the DG1000 here. Uh, they're really interested because once you have your manometer, the price point of entry to the TrueFlow is a lot less. So, you know, the manometer is a big part of that cost. And we'll see this demonstrated tonight in the screening of home diagnosis that we're doing for this crowd. So I hope that you've enjoyed this tour. Please do comment below if you have other things to add about the uh, state of the tools and the equipment and all the latest and greatest things that are coming out that are actually making our jobs a lot easier thanks to the manufacturers that are working on this stuff. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time.